Hey everybody, it's Tony Flynn with Hippie the Tech, and I'm coming to you during our renovation. So I am, as you can see, I am dirty. I am pretty much depleted of any kind of energy. I just look here. So we got this RV here, and we're taking everything out of this RV here to move it into this RV here. And we still have a lot of work left to do. Uh, go to our YouTube channel. Actually, you're probably on it right now if you're watching this, but check out the Flipping the Fifth series and you're, you'll be able to see all the different things we're working on. But today we're doing a collab video about solar and battery systems. And uh, so I want to take a break and make sure I get that video out because I promised everybody it would be out shortly. So here we go. We're Phil and Stacy from You, Me, and the RV. And we've been on the road full time for almost two years now. Two very long years. <laughs> no, it's, it's been two great years, I can tell you that. And our goal for power was for me to be able to use any appliance at any time without having to turn on our generator. Well, except for the AC. Whether it's Instant Pot, Flat Iron, Coffee Pot, most importantly, that was our goal. Yeah, I think coffee pot was the goal of, of having um, power on demand like if we were in our sticks and bricks. Hey guys, I'm Jesse. This is Melissa. Um, we've been traveling for roughly over a year now with our pickup truck and a fifth wheel trailer. So our goal with our solar system was to be able to charge computers, she works from the road, monitors, cell phones, all your basic items, and then just a little bit more. We wanted to be able to use our microwave occasionally. Um, we have a magic bullet that we like to use. And then, you know, TVs as well, and not being able to run the generator 24 seven. Our rig does have a built-in generator, but the main key was to go mostly solar with generator occasionally here and there. Yeah, and be able to run our little smoker off of it as well. Yes, we also have a pellet smoker that we run pretty much 24 seven. <laughs> and it runs great, it runs off the solar, and that's about it, nothing too crazy, just the basics, and we're not extremely power hungry. Oh, it's bright out. Man, it's really bright. You know you have black shit all over your face, I'm right? covered in stuff, yeah. We wanted to go out and boondock for extended periods of time, uh, where we're not gonna be hooked up to anything, and we don't want to miss out on, on you know, using our Ninja Foodi or running the air conditioning every once in a while. Um, we want to be able to use all of our outlets in the house. So there's certain things that we had to get. We had to get a um, we had to get a better inverter. We had to get better batteries. You know, we ended up with six Battleborn batteries, and we have a Victron inverter. We have a Victron charge controller for our high-tech solar panels. We went with 1600 watts on the roof, and we also have a Smart Face selector. And the Smart Face selector allows us. It kind of acts like a switch, but it allows us to. If I'm plugged into a 15 amp circuit, if I'm running more than 15 amps worth of appliances, I actually can uh, allow the batteries to make up for it. It actually assists um, the pedestal power. Our system consists of 1200 watts of solar on the roof and six 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium batteries down in the basement. We also added a 3000 watt hybrid inverter to go along with our Magnum PT100 charge controller. So that's a, a lot of equipment to say that we have power on demand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our system has a total of 580 watts up on the roof. We have a 2000 watt inverter with a big charge controller um, that can handle up to 1300 watts. And that's about it. We added two Lion lithium batteries to go with the setup. So far it's been great. It's actually fairly new for us, but we seem like we have plenty of power and everything has been great. Yeah, so far so good. If you're gonna be wanting to run appliances with a lot of power, there's a video that Todd Henson and I did that will allow you to kind of compute how many batteries and how many solar panels you'll need depending on what kind of appliances you're going to be running. So we had our solar panels installed by professionals because we both are not comfortable enough with electrical work to feel confident in our skills and we didn't want to mess anything up and burn anything down so 
We decided to go with an installer um, just to save ourselves the headache and the frustration and, and the worry over it. And uh, it was a pretty penny, but it was definitely worth it. Yeah, I mean, we've had the system for, I don't know, a month, let's say, and it's been great. Um, it was turnkey, everything worked perfectly, and, you know, we don't have to worry about any issues. Um, I mean, professionals can make mistakes, but this is a very reputable company. Mm -hmm. And it's been great, and it's nice to have that peace of mind. Everything we mentioned, we installed ourselves with the help of friends. Uh, none of us were professional electricians. We installed our power system in two separate installations. So first was our lithium batteries, our Battleborns, which we installed May of last year, and then our solar we added to the roof this past December. So a lot of people say, you you, you run your air conditioner with solar, you know, that's, that's crazy, really you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, it, it, there's some give and take. So we will run our air conditioner during the day when it's hot off of our batteries. And because the solar is actually pretty much covering about half that power, Hour, um, we're gonna drain our batteries slower with the solar panels running um, but then at the end of the day when the Sun's going da gone down we're not really needing to use the air conditioning anymore our batteries are still depleted so that's where we'll run the generator for a couple hours instead of running the generator all day long running our air conditioner we'll use our batteries to run the air conditioner and then just the generator for a couple hours at the end of the day If I could have put in the lithium battleborne batteries uh, first, or I should say months before we actually did them, that's what I would have done. Those have been a game changer since the day we put them in. One of the things we really like about our install is the fact that our solar panels were not screwed down on the roof. We did not put any holes in the roof for that installation. We use um, the adhesive that actually came with the solar panels on the little brackets, and then Bill went ahead and added Turnabine. I was going to say the tape added turnabine just for that extra safety net just in case even though it according to the manufacturer we didn't have to do that yeah and they they told me that we've never lost a panel yet I didn't want to go viral that way <laughs> losing my panel so I put the turnabine on as extra so as far as doing anything differently on our system um, not too much so far it's been good like we said I think eventually I would like to add maybe another couple hundred watts on the roof, just get a little bit more sun, you know, collecting that power. And then potentially another lithium ion as well. Right now we have two, and all of you guys know how expensive lithium is. It's a great uh, investment. Definitely. But, um, you know, originally it was just too much to add a third, and then we also could only get so much solar. It was a balance, and we're very happy, but eventually, potentially, another battery and a couple couple more panels. So I've got eight high-tech panels, 200 watts a piece, and it's really important to make sure that when you're pairing these together, like if you look back, I've got four this way and then four the other direction. So I wanna make sure that when I'm pairing these, they're all uh, meaning that they're wired together, they're all facing the same angle of the sun, or they, the sun's hitting it at the same angle. Uh, you don't want to have one this direction and then the other one in the shade because it's going to affect the one that's getting full sun. As far as uh, uniqueness with the system, I guess it would just have to be the lithium batteries, which is really not that unique, but that's what we, we are most excited about. Um, and it's been working really well so far. We've been um, in a lot of cloudy areas this past month since we got it installed, and it's been keeping up pretty well. When we unplug from a pedestal and our air is running and everything's playing, nothing ever turns off. It just keeps playing. As a matter of fact, sometimes we forget that if we're going somewhere we can plug in, we forget to plug in 
and uh, we run our batteries down. So We love our system. So if you're looking at getting lithium or solar, check it out. Remember, you don't have to have both systems. So you can have solar without lithium and lithium without solar. Figure out what your needs are and then get what you think is going to be best for your RVing style. Right, and you don't have to do them all at the same time either. So you could, like Stacy said, figure out which one you need first and put that in and then decide. But you definitely don't need to do it all at one time. Well, let's talk about something. If you think that you need solar to get started, you, you don't. We spent the first year and a half without even lithium batteries. We had a couple lead acid batteries and those lead acid batteries just, uh, you know, they worked fine until they stopped working. Did I tell you about that hot mess? We had some lead acid batteries that kind of exploded on us. You know, honestly, I think it was good for us to learn what we were doing in stages. I would encourage you guys, if you're thinking about getting in this lifestyle, get out of the sun because it's super bright. Holy smoke. <clears throat> All right, cue the dramatic music again. If you're thinking about getting in this lifestyle, man, just do it. Get into it, learn to love it, learn to go with the flow, and I think you'll be surprised um, how awesome it is. You can find us on YouTube at UBNRV, and then we also have a blog that we're putting out fresh content all the time, and that's at todayissomday.net. Yep, and don't forget Facebook and Pinterest. That's right, so check us out, look for us. We would love to meet you and welcome you to our group. That's right. You can find us on Facebook. I'm Melissa Azarva, and he's Jesse Azarva. And then we also have a YouTube channel and an Instagram, and they are both under Adventure Endeavor. So until next time, we'll see you later.